We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 11, and then we're going to go to uh, Luke 11 and read my, my text. I do want to say, don't let the imperfections and even the failure of people turn you away from the perfections and the triumphs of Christ who will never fail you. Can I get an amen? amen? Praise God. The greatest threat to every person ever born is to be found unprepared to encounter Jesus at his coming. Amen. Amen. As our custom here, we stand for the reading of the word. Amen. There's a, a little uh, percentage meme that goes out. I've seen it before, but I just feel it's pertinent today when it comes to living for God. If a child leads the way in commitment to church, 3.5% of families follow. If just a mom leads, it's 17%. But if a dad leads, it's 93%. I will say that every great servant of God is a worshiper of God, and they're willing to pay the price to be so. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. I'm not going to read all the things that precede this verse because we could just put our names there and read on. <laughs> and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus yes. and by the Spirit of our God. Amen. You know, why don't we just lay our Bibles down right now? Why don't we just lift up our hands and our voices? Let's talk to Jesus for our Lord. We need you today. God, the spirit of the age, the human spirits, our own spirits that we have to deal with are, are becoming our own personal stumbling blocks. Issues, circumstances all seem to pile on top of us and create a dysfunction, Lord, that we can't function in the, in the things of life. We can't function in the things of the spirit. We become dysfunctional even in the church. We need your help, Lord. We, we need the power of the Holy Ghost to move on us lest we be stuck in the air of our own ways, God. We need you today at Souls Harbor. I need you today, God. Move in this house, Lord God. And move on me with a unction, God, that brings with it a function in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. God bless you. You can be seated. You know, when God called you, he knew your makeup. He knew everything about you. Your propensities to some things, your weaknesses. Let me say, God knows our dysfunctions. Dysfunction is not disqualification. In fact, one of the wonderful things about church is it is normally the meeting place where dysfunction and desperation meet deity. It's an important situation. But, but before I go too much further and, and uh, get into this, dysfunction, according to the dictionary, is a pretty good description of myself. Not operating normally or properly. <laughs> Deviating from the norms of social behavior. Well, maybe I'm the only one in here. 
conduct and behavior in a way regarded as bad. I know what the corners of a room look like. Back in the 70s, there was a punishment, but I don't know that they do it much today, but it was painful for me to have to sit in the corner, face the corner while my three sisters, normally, in my view, probably the perpetrator of the problem that I'm now being forced to pay the price for, is enjoying Ultraman or Woody the Woodpecker, and I could hear the cartoons behind me. And my mom had no problem being the enforcer if for somehow my anatomy allowed me to try to turn my head. But I could not be in general population, for those of you that know what that means, because I was dysfunctional. I had issues. And to my disappointment, even with my not quite Matthew. Is Matthew in here? <laughs> 54 years of life. I have not left a lot of my dysfunctions behind. I remember sitting in a car looking at my parents and realizing one day I'm not going to have this struggle with my dysfunctions anymore because I'll be a grown-up and problem-free. No, I remember, I remember at the, at the Millette's house, sitting in the car again, by myself, again, because I was dysfunctional. I could not get along with everybody. I always, okay, one th well, this, this, this is an indictment, but okay. Before I could get a BB gun, I got one of those things where it had that, that rubber in there that you pulled back and shot a BB that way. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. In my dysfunction, I decided to put as many BBs as I could hold into it and shoot into a palm tree. Not a big deal, right? Until underneath the palm tree stood Mr. and Mrs. Millett and my mom and dad. <laughs> to my horror, when I looked and I saw my dad's military look, this isn't going to end well. <laughs> and I found myself with a difficulty sit down on my posterior in our car and looking out at the rest of the world, wondering why I don't fit in. Now, I know no, nobody here relates to that. But I, I can tell you that while my mind still has the same ideas sometimes that I had as a young boy, my experience has taught me no, that's not a good idea. So I've learned that there is an element of maturity that comes with growing up. God forbid Sister Crow would have to come in here because I fire off a BB gun and I need to go sit in the car for a while. <laughs> anyway, see, my mind just did it again. My mind just said, say this. But I couldn't say what I wanted to say because it'd be dysfunctional. I hope I'm getting my point across. Yeah. Yeah. Is anybody, can anybody relate with me today? Okay, 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 okay. But I want to talk about the fact that God can help you in your dysfunction. In fact, he wants to help you in your dysfunction. In fact, in Acts 1 and 8, he lets us know that not only can he help us with our dysfunction, that when we allow him to, we will become the greatest witnesses to the power of his ability to say, your dysfunction is not disqualification. But you shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. What is he saying? You need the Holy Ghost. 
You can't be good enough by yourself. You can't, you need the help of a loving God. Don't blow it off and think you'll ever be good enough. You're not going to make it. I need the Holy Ghost to quicken me, to convict me, to help that little part of my brain that couldn't stop my thoughts from turning into actions or my thoughts turning into real words. Are you with me? Okay, all right. So let's let's get into this. We're going to go to Luke 11. I'm going to read one verses 1 through 13. You need to go with me here. Um, I really don't plan on keeping you long. I know that sounds crazy for Brother Crow, but if, if you'll get this, we can get out of here. I mean, I, I, I'm more like my dad. I'm going to lecture till you get it. You have to understand that my dad just doesn't want something the guy that's just going to spank you and, and, and help. He'll sit there and break it down as many times as he can to help your little pea brain get a few more peas in the pod. Follow along in your Bibles, if you will. You can remain seated right now. And it came to pass, listen to this. I want you to listen like never before. And I am being tried by my iPad this morning to a degree that's never happened before. It keeps jumping back to the start. So if I start over, it's not me. It's this, maybe, maybe it knows you need to hear something again. I don't know. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. They heard something. They heard something in that prayer that garnered their attention. And in his benevolence, he, he, he did so. He said, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when you pray, say. And I'm not going to get through this first one quickly because I want you to catch something here. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our who? Okay. Let me stop for a minute. I can't tell you how much I would love to sit and talk to my father right now. I lost him as a young teenager. So I haven't had a conversation with my dad in three times longer than I've been, four times longer than I've been alive. And it's really, it would be amazing to sit down. But what I'm saying is, God wants you to talk to him like he's your father. Not your employee. Not some tyrant that wants to beat you. Dad, father, I can say I revere my dad. The Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. It doesn't say honor your father or mother because they were perfect. It doesn't say honor your father and mother because they were absolutely fantastic and gave you everything you want. It says just to honor them. Powerful. I can't go there today. Uh, perhaps that'll get touched on a little bit next week in our Mother's Day service. For what you don't want to miss because we have a special speaker for that too. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in earth, so in, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Mm -hmm. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. Right? And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I'm going to be honest with you. Most of us never get past the give us. Your life, your mentality, your prayer, everything about you is give, give. You think daddy's, you turn God into a sugar daddy. Doesn't matter how I act, give. It doesn't mean if uh, I'm good, just give, just give, just give. And, and look, sadly, even though God doesn't give us everything, we, we get a mindset that God is just wanting 
to give instead of following his will and his ways, no matter if he's close by or far. But it doesn't stop there because he goes right into a parable. Now pay attention. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight? Everybody say midnight. I want you to remember that. And say unto him, friend, lend me three loaves for a friend of mine in his journey has come to me and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within, inside, shall answer and say, trouble me not. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed and I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, not because he's a friend, but because of the importunity, he will rise. Look, you need to pay attention because this is going to be a thread throughout this message today and it's going to look at us. There's a mirror here and give him as many as he needeth. He asked for a couple, but he'll give them as many as needeth because of what? Importunity. I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What Jesus is saying is, I will open my doors for your importunity. In your dysfunction. Not because you're good. Not be, see, see, some of you think, well, bless God, don't bless me because I'm the best saint in the church. No, 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 no. See, now, you're, now you have an employer. <laughs> and you wonder why you don't hear nothing for a lo- so long because you put him as an employer so he's waiting for you to do something to bless you. Oh, well, we won't go down that road today. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that seeketh findeth. Now you have to understand the qualification here is the how to pray. Can I tell you something? If he's not your Lord, if you're not under his authority, I love everyone in here. If you came up and had a need, I'd weigh it out. But if Erica walked up to me and had a need, okay. If you want God, that relationship with God, you have to have that relationship with God. Amen. Amen, amen. You hear what I said? Okay. It, it's the same with a marriage. I mean, all you ladies, man, I'll do anything I can for you. Mr. Crow asked me. Does that make sense? Okay. If a son shall ask bread of any of you, that is a father. Notice he even denotes the relationship. It's about relationship, folks. Will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, if we understand that concept of relationship on how to give good gifts unto our children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them? That knows what he said your greatest need is. It's holy. It's about relationship. There ought to be something about us. Hey, wait a minute. I want that intimate relationship. I heard one uh, one friend of mine preaching, and he says, you know why I speak in tongues? It's the language of my father's house. That's why I'm speaking. Just the other day, uh, um, people, uh, we we were at a table, we were eating, and we had a bunch of, oh, there's probably about 15, 20 people there at that time. And they were trying to figure out where I was from because of my, I don't know, do I have an accent, church? Do I have a, do I, I, I don't know. I just, thank you. I, I think I just talk normal, right? Now, you can't mistake where Bola Ulu's from. Huh? I wait for him to show up with pineapples in his pocket sometime, you know? He's, a, he's an islander. That's awesome. And, that, and that awesome, no mistaking there. We can pick that, and there's nothing wrong with that. So a lot of people, in fact, you know, I've been dysfunctional enough that when people try to get, I say, I'll tell you what, give you a hundred bucks if you can guess where I'm from. Now, some of you might know, but anybody know where I was born? You all, if you know, because you've been around the family here for one. But nobody, nobody's going to guess where I'm from. They think Italy, Greece, the nut house, who knows? You know, nobody's going to know. Now that I, now I'm about to say, uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming? Really? Who comes from there? 
We got a genius in the house. And that's the real cowboy state. It's the real one. All them unders, I get they, because they're so big. Well, that's another kind of state to be in mentally, but we'll let them go. In the context of disciples, that's the Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer, tells this unusual story, and ends with ask, seek, and knock, right? Now, notice there was a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a word in there that gives a description, midnight. Look, I love y'all, but if you show up my house at midnight, I know it ain't good. Who gets a knock at midnight? Oh, wonderful. Oh, okay. When your phone rings at midnight, you ain't thinking, oh, great, I won the lottery. No, it's not. No, no. Oh, great. I, they just deposited a million dollars in my bank account, and they said me I can keep it. When you get a knock at midnight, it's not good. But isn't that where we live? <laughs> so if the man that needed help came at midnight because he had a friend that came at midnight, okay, wait a minute. We got a bunch of dysfunction here. Who travels at midnight? Something happened. Something was wrong. We got an entire situation that's going from bad to worse. We got a lot of dysfunction in this story. Jesus is not hiding the fact. Are you hearing me? <laughs> hey, folks, he's teaching us to pray, but he's showing us right where we live. Because when do we pray most? When everything's falling apart, that midnight moment when, oh, God, when, when whatever comes knocking at the door at the inopportune time, help me be my lost friend. Because if you're traveling at midnight, what are you doing? Are you hearing me? And so the man was, I mean, they're already comfortable. They're in bed. They're already settled. And how many of us, be real, be honest. Got someone that shows up. They need something. Well, what's in it for me? I'm warm. I'm fed. Why should I bother? Your fault. You got lost. The type here is a lost world in a sleeping church. Lost people. It's sleeping saints. A hurting world and healthy saints. We get to the place where we have literally someone has to beat down our door for us to recognize that I'm here to help. And can I say this, church, church folks? This isn't a hotel. You don't put up a dis do not disturb sign. Shut up your bowels of compassion because, well, what's in it for me? What do I get out of the deal? What do I get all involved? I'm not. Are we not the delivery people for the bread of life? Is that not really the true summation of our Christianity when someone's in need that what we have is available? See, one of, the, one of the biggest ways to shut God down in your life is to take what he's given you and make it yours. If it's all about you, he's going to find someone else. He's going to look for someone else. It's if it's all about what it can get you and do for you and all about you, God's like, wow, oh, man. It's not that God doesn't love you, but every parent knows, man, I got a selfish child. And I just, man. Every time I turn around, you're in the same mess year after year, day after day. This, you're dis, this, hello? Look, we all come to God with a dysfunction, but over time, it needs to improve. Hey Amen. I was holding a two-year-old a little while ago, and I'm thankful that I'm no longer a two-year-old. And I don't know if he was in diapers or not, but I'm glad you're all not in diapers. And I'm pretty sure mom and dad's glad. You're still not in diapers because it's one change to change one thing to change a two-year-old's diaper and quite another to change an adult's diaper. Some, some people are visual thinkers. So listen, if we don't deliver the bread or what God has given us, God will eventually 
okay, since you're looking at it as this all in for you thing, you, you look at me as an employer, I'll just fire you. And I'm gonna hire somebody else that'll realize I'm there to give through you instead of just to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. He cares about people. He cares about bread for the hungry. How many is glad that God's blessed you in your dysfunction? How many is glad that you were able to go to somebody and God and they, wow, they put themselves in peril to help you because they knew what it was like to be in peril and need God's help. All right? Praise God. The Bible lets us know that look on the fields. They're white. Let down your nets. Do everything you can. People are lost and they're at your door. Thankfully, this was not the attitude of the men in Jesus' parable. He got up out of his comfort zone and did something about the need. Be careful when I say this. Because I'm not talking about Souls Harbor, but I'm talking about Souls Harbor. I'm not talking about you, but I'm talking about you. I'm not talking about me, but I'm talking about me. Have you ever felt like you were trying to find God in a dysfunctional church? Have you ever tried to find God when you're working with a dysfunctional saint? Well, Christianity, for the most part, in America, is pretty dysfunctional. It no longer believes in changing for the presence of the Lord. We all, we all know the saying, is she the kind of girl you take home to? What does that say? What does that mean? Oh, hold on. There's an honor part. There's a, a standard part. It's funny uh, 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 of what the, our understanding there, but when it comes to church, God's going to keep accepting, accepting me like, no, no more than accept a child getting older and still being in diapers. There needs to be some growth. God doesn't need to be cleaning up the same mess year after year. Are we hearing what I'm saying? But I I do have good news for you. You can find God even in this functional church. (laughs) You know why? You know how? Because you can reach out for God for yourself. You can reach out for God on your own. You can. You don't have to have the dictates of those around you. If you're sitting by a, a someone that won't worship, move. If you're sitting by someone that's not a real believer, move. I mean, if you're married to him, you're kind of stuck. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> in the church, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what's happening, you can be in the middle of a divorce, you can be in the middle of a mess, but if you on your own decide, wait a minute, in my dysfunctional life, in my dysfunctional, I've had enough, and all by myself, I can say, Jesus, I need help, and I'm knocking on your door. I'm knocking on your door with a knee. With all my dysfunction, I'm not disqualified to knock on the door of my God. Amen. (laughs) Sometimes, churches get overfed. Babies get overfed. I'm not talking about babies and diapers. Hey, what they said to me. I remember I saw a little meme the other day and I came across there was a little girl. She's just crying. Oh, my, oh, oh, daddy called me a Democrat. She don't know what that is, but she's dad just called her that because he was being perceived. Mama <laughs> called me a Democrat. Daddy called me a Democrat. Four-year-old doesn't know what that means. Some of us, we... Listen, if the preacher te- tell, preaches something that hurts your feelings and it's the truth, he's not wrong. You can cry all you want. My dad had a, had a solution for that. 
Well, son, if you're going to cry about that, come over here and let me give you a real reason to cry. Hello? Some of us need to quit babying our adult children because they're getting a little overfed and a little overspoiled and they're acting like little brats and they're going to lose their soul because mommy and daddy, oh, this not hurt my little baby kids. I'm thankful I was raised in a time when your neighbor could spank your backside if you did something stupid. Mm -hmm. Mr. Beats owned a peach farm next door to our, well, a trucking company. He had peaches and walnuts on his property. We just had walnuts. But there was always these feral cats out there. But he spent a lot of time on his irrigation, and the last thing he needed was this little dysfunctional idiot running around with his friend and his dog tearing down the irrigation stuff. My dad was cool about neighbors. My boy doing something wrong. You spank his butt, send him home to me, and I'll spank him again. We'll make sure we get this dysfunction fixed. If you if 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 the pastor preaches or mom and dad teaches, you get your little feelings all hurt, and you run and find someone to will you come over here? We ain't gonna punch you for that. Did they really do you a favor? Everybody say, I'm not a dysfunction, but I'm not disqualified. All right, let's get into this. First Samuel chapter 22, beginning of verse one. David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Dulam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. Is the one they didn't want to bring to the, to the meeting, for those of you that know your Bible. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. You want to talk about a dysfunctional group. Everyone was, his, the cave was full of dysfunction. The cave was full of discontent. The cave was full of problems. <laughs> if David, being a shepherd of this flock, he certainly had an interesting flock. The group that followed him was com compromised of people who were in distress. They were in debt. They were discontented. Ever wonder why pastors have stress? Ever wonder why parents are going to pull my hair out with these kids? Their little flock is dysfunctional. But the good news in Jesus' story is that although the, the friend at first didn't want to rise for the sake of friendship, he did it due to persistence. Going somewhere. Jesus used the word importunity. Here, the only time in the New Testament, here's this word. You know what it means? Shame, shamelessness, insistence, persistence, impudence, and troublesome. You don't deserve a thing, but I'm going to come and ask God for it anyway. I have been a spoiled, rotten brat. I've been the epitome of that child sitting there with that great big lollipop licking it, asking for something else. Some of the, Come on, we've been saints like that. But what's going on here is he's like, you know what? I'm not going and doing this because I'm friends with you. I'm going because I'm going to help you because of your importunity. When you pray like this, you get results. Remember, this all started when the disciples asked Jesus, he just to pray. I want results. I need something to happen. It's time to get some function out of your dysfunction. It's time to ask, seek, and knock continually. I know I don't deserve it. Uh, I know I've got issues and dysfunctions. And, uh, I'm going to shamelessly keep believing God as my father to help me. Now, hold on, because I've got, I've got to show the other side, because some of us are like, 
I'm rich and keep increased with goods and I don't need nothing. Go read the rest of that. Some of y'all got pious. Brown. Mm -hmm. You look down on the needs of your lost loved ones and friends. That's ah, just the way they are and you stopped praying for them. You've stopped going to daddy about your needs because you're self-sufficient and have a new dysfunction. Because it's not about deserving, it's about need. Matthew chapter 15, 22 through 20. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me. O oh Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Here's someone praying. Here's someone seeking. Here's someone doing something in the kingdom of God for someone else. We're learning something here. But are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh, in the same coast of Christ, I'm saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Okay, the worst she can get. But he answered her not a word. Oh, man, come on, not them. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Even the disciples. He answered and said, I am not come to unto the lost sheep of the house of I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and, this is the key, folks. Some of you come, you'll sing a little praise. Give me that little golf clap at the end of a nice little something that I say. Stop, Pastor. Him and worship him, saying, Lord, help me. He, he just said, I'm not even come for people like you. She simply said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, he didn't say, okay. No, listen to what he said. It's not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. She kept going. She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, oh, woman. There's emphasis there. There's emphasis here. Oh, finally, someone gets it. Someone, someone pressed through it. Someone got past that stoic mentality. Well, if he wants me to have it, if he wants my child to change, if he wants, uh, he'll do Oh, he find there's someone that's going to keep knocking. It's not about merit. It's, it's about importunity. I'm going to keep asking you because I recognize who you are. I know who you are. I believe in who you are. It's not about who I am. It's about who you are. I come to God today. I'm faithful to charge every service. Why? Because of who he is, not because I'm perfect, not because I've achieved something. I've got dysfunction, but I'm not disqualified. Oh, woman, oh, saint of God, that you would become that saint today. Great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This, this story is in the Bible. For anyone who's ever felt like they don't belong, you know, the sit in the car guys, the get in the corner people, the rejected folks, the church group. Well, I'm not on the in crowd there. This church ain't like that got a dysfunctional past. Well, what are you doing up there? I'm just trying to put the fun, fun back in dysfunction.
I'm trying to put the fun back in dysfunction and realize, you know what? Nobody in here perfect. No, no, what, what makes this church great is people that are like, you know what? I know God can. I know God can. You may not understand me, but it's not about understanding me. It's about understanding him. I got dysfunction. That doesn't disqualify me. I'm going to put God on the throne. And I'm seeking him. And no matter what state I'm in, I still need him. No matter how good I got it, I still need. No matter how bad I got it, I know I need. This woman didn't let her inferiority and dysfunction become her destiny. See, some people get so blessed that you step out of needing him anymore. So I hope you're so blessed because this is all the heaven you're ever going to taste. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be really upset and you're going to be like that older son working in the yard. And he says to a servant, hey, how come I hear a celebration at dad's house? It's a sad thing when you don't know what's going on in dad's house. Oh, Jesus. It's a sad day when you don't realize there's celebration in dad's house because you're out there going, wait a minute, you need to do for me. You need, you, are you, are you missed the point. And he gave him this subtle rebuke. I, all that I have is yours. The problem is, is you're running around thinking it's yours and you don't want to help people anymore. You don't love people anymore. You don't care. Your brother's home and you didn't know they're having a celebration for your lost brother and you'd rather sit there and go, what are they doing that for him for? You missed the point. It's not about qualification. It's about him being king of kings and lord of lords. It's not about us picking people apart, but about God putting people back together. Don't get mad at me when pastor gets mad at us religious folks. Come here, brother Bruce. I can pick on you because you got a big heart. Dun, da, da, da. Why can't we all look like that? He fasts three times a week, prays and read his Bible every day. Never a bad word comes out of his mouth. His finances and his tithing is to the letter and beyond. It's amazing. <laughs> First one to say, I needed that. See, 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 we don't put these on because we've arrived somewhere. We put these on to reverence the one because we're going somewhere. I hope no one thinks they're arrived because that aligns what I said earlier. This is the only heaven you're going to get. You see, she just kept at Jesus till she got what she needed. He put her dysfunction function to work. He asked Jesus. He didn't even answer her. Seek. She began to persistently seek help from the disciples. Not even when insulted, she kept right on knocking. She was far from the only persistent person in the Bible. She's not the only one that set that tone that no matter your dysfunction, no matter where you're at, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter how messy your life is, he's still our miracle working God. He's still, when, what gives me hope is when I'm working with people, hey, I don't know what God can do, but I know God can do. Listen, in Mark chapter 5, and I need, to, I, need to, I need to finish this up. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman had to issue a blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians. Look, she's diligent. And had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. It's amazing where we'll send our money. Her hope was in physicians. When she heard of Jesus, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. Don't worry about the 
people ahead of you. They're not reaching for Jesus. Just press through and get a hold of him. She said, if I may, now listen, because this is the thing that's coming. I don't think she said, hey, everybody, you know, I think if I press through y'all and touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. I think it was in here, she said, in her heart. Some of you were sitting here, how many got an interior monologue going on? I mentioned this Wednesday night, and it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a, a lot on this right now, my personal study. She said, if I may but touch his clothes. Lacey, she's having this inner monologue about God, about Jesus, about need, about struggle, about problems. about If I may but touch his clothes, I shall, I shall be whole. She had a hold of something nobody else there did. In fact, we're going to learn a little bit here in a minute. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that, 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 what was it? She was healed of what she was reaching out for. Mm, if you're not reaching out, how can you be healed of that or get that sick? Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? <laughs> And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude throng. There's a lot of people around. John, he knows when someone touches him. The last time he came to church, I'm going to touch My mind is made up. No, but I'm sitting here and nobody realizes that I need a touch from Jesus. Yeah. And if I can just reach and just put touch the hand, I, I, I know this thing in my family, this thing in my home, this issue in my body, this thing when my relate, this, 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 this dysfunction has not disqualified me. Because if I can touch him, whatever that dysfunction is, <laughs> are you with me today? Jesus, you see all these people touching you and you're asking who touched me? And he turned to look to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her. It's not outward, folks. If you're stuck on outward, you're, you've missed it. What's going on inward? It's your inner monologue. What are you saying to yourself inside your head? What are you saying about God? What are you thinking? How are you thinking about God, his church, his people? Because it all affects what you touch. You ever been married or with someone or in a room and all of a sudden you felt like you weren't wanted there? I wonder how many times our thoughts made Jesus feel that way. Knowing what was done in her came and fell down before him. Told all the and, and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, you see, not an employer. Father. Oh, that you hear that today and feel the spirit of that today. Your sons and daughters in here. Your sons and daughters in here. The struggle, daddy sees, daddy knows, but you stop reaching for him. Thy faith that made thee whole. <laughs> her faith, not her qualifications. The reach was a manifestation of her faith. When you come to an altar, it's not that that does it. It's the desire that I'll do whatever it takes to get from God. Can I correct you? It's not God's move. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. It's your move. He's not late. 
He's not dysfunctional. He's not disqualified. He's everything we're not. It's not his move. It's yours. Think about her dysfunctional condition. And I bring this up because this is important to some of us because to us, sadly, image is everything. And not being like Jesus. To be like Jesus comes from within. That's why you, you give secretly. You pray constantly. You love unequivocally. Those are, anybody can put on long sleeves. And, but it's the inward. The inward. All the neighbors knew her house. She had the dysfunctional home. You know, we all know the dysfunctional home. The cops are always there. <laughs> Here she is. No one wants to go over there. No one's jumping up and making a casserole to go over there. She's alone. Day after day, month after month, year after year, no physical contact with another human being. No one wanted to touch her. The very presence, the very sight of her, of someone who knew her condition to recoil in order to avoid. I don't want contempt. So for 12 years, Enriched from her body, weak, unclean, dysfunctional in the eyes of her family and community. Now, I know some of you have never felt this way, but I've walked into churches and it felt completely like, oh. Walk into a restaurant and get something to eat. You've been under house working and people look at oh my God, you're be homeless. Get my tail off right now, please. Been out in the yard all day. Car broke down. And we judge people. You don't want to, don't want to touch them. Don't, don't contaminate my space. Let me find my holy row in the church. So she's all alone and cut off. Hearing not only the whispers of her crying eyed neighbors, but surrounded by the screams of her own self conduct. She had invested all for what little money she had begged for in the false hope herself of a plague to no avail. There was not a counselor. There was no doctor who did not know her. They had not tried to sell her a remedy for her situation. And still, the Bible says she grew worse. She grew worse and didn't get help her. She grew poorer. You ever get in a situation that you have one thing that leads to another thing that leads to another, and the next thing you know, you're like, this is not the plans that I had for my life. This is not the whole, nobody gets married to get a divorce. Nobody gets a job to get fired. No, nobody, nobody gets out of high school thinking, I want to go and be a failure. But nevertheless, if you've lived long, you realize you found yourself, I can't believe I ended up here. How, after all that I know, after all that I've been taught, after all that I've been given, after all, how did I get so dysfunctional? <laughs> She's at a dysfunctional all-time low. With the walls of her condition closing in on her, she finally realized she could no longer live with this issue, this dysfunction in her life. She had to act 
and act alone if necessary. She had to do something drastic. If need be, she realized, I've got to do something. They had to change or I'm going to die in this condition. It'll be over for me. The dysfunction will destroy me. It hasn't disqualified. But if it's left unattended, it will destroy. So when we first see her in the Bible, she's weakly walking, probably crawling sometimes, pushing in desperation through the suffocating crowd to get her one last best hope. You know, I, I'm selfish. There is nothing worse than showing up at a restaurant and there's a crowd of people outside. Hello, America. Who are all these people? Get, don't they know how important I am? Come on, you get there and you're like, come on, guys. I was planning on, look, you're messing up my Fruit Loops here. Get out, leave. I need a table. Don't we? To feed this. Anybody here? refers to an altar because you want something that really matters oh I don't want to go there there's a wait in fact the other day we went out to eat with a couple 25 minute wait I thought it was the end of the world don't they know what I just went through don't they know the struggles in my life don't they understand what's going on in my life, my soul, my body, my relationship? How 25, are you kidding me? For a hamburger, 25? Are, it'll probably happen to some of us this afternoon. Yeah, Pastor, because if you get up for noon, we can beat the other churches. They're just spectators. I really love to eat here. I can't believe I show up to Olive Garden. I want my minestrone soup. I can I just can I just bypass y'all? Come on now. Sadly, Jesus is surrounded by spectators. Somehow, in spite of the crowd, he manages to reach in of his garment. That was enough. That was enough. Because though we would reject her and push her aside and want to bypass her to get to our table, Jesus saw something in her that he didn't see in the people that he didn't see in the people surrounding. See, see, see those of you that think you've got the corner on the market on holiness. There's no sin in your life. The church ought to be so ecstatic that you show up. The, all the privilege that you can get. There's people pressing through past you. Her desire was irresistible to Jesus. I said her desire was irresistible. Her desire caused him to look past her dysfunction. Her desire was so intrinsically attractive to Jesus that even the disciples didn't matter. Let me go. Oh, there's something about this lady. There's something about her. Jesus loves the desire that's hidden in all your dysfunction. I want you to stand. I'm going to close out here. Now your stomachs are turned right. I'm going to get to eat. Where are you going? Today's Friday's. You see, You have to be in the right place to get the right value.
Can you imagine her mindset with people telling her to be quiet? Can you imagine her mindset just watching people there for the party instead of being there for their problems? Yeah, I, I'll come to give someone an opportunity to get the monkey off your back to quit trying to have the image of perfection so where you come to an altar today and actually touch perfection. But the only thing that's going to get past your dysfunction will be your desire to touch Jesus. I know what's going on right now. Hear your monologue. Ah, it's just Brother Crow. You're right, it is. Because it's still not about me. It's about your desire. You see, some of us are going to indict ourselves because let someone do something you really don't like and you have a desire, nothing's going to stop you. Someone take your parking spot. Someone cut you off. Someone touch your baby. Let's go. And you're so tenacious for that, but timid for this. The enemy's messed with your mind and the dysfunction is in here. Is in, but that's okay. Because if you'll get a desire, because remember, listen, this get the right value. Thing. The right value is found in the right place. There was his dad, so proud, so proud of his daughter, so proud. She'd been just pouring herself into the church and pouring herself into her studies and pouring herself, and she finally graduates. And he said, you know, sweetheart, I am so proud of you. I, I have a car that I want to I wanna give you. It's an old car. But before I actually give it to you, I want you to do something. I want you to take it down to the used car lot or to the car lot. And I want you to see how much they'll give you for it. She went down there and met a slick car salesman. Come on, young lady, I got a car. I say, yeah, can't, come on, come on. How about this model right here? How about that? I'll tell you what, I'll give you $1,000 down with that car. Come on. Goes back to her dad. Well, he said to give me $1,000 towards a down payment down on a new car. Father said, I'll tell you what. Take the car over to the pawn shop, see what you can get for it. So she drove the car down to the pawn shop and turned to her father and said, well, the pawn shop offered me 500 bucks because they said it's pretty worn out. It's an old car. It's going to take a lot of money to restore it. Father said, okay, I'll tell you what. Now I want you to take the car. I want you to take it down to the car club. I want you to show them the car. So she took the car down there. When she returned, her eyes were like, I can't believe it. I had offers up to $50,000 for the car. They wanted the car. The father said to his daughter, you see, I wanted you to understand something because you're graduating and you're going to move on. The right place will value you the right way. If you're not valued, don't be angry. It just means you've been in the wrong places. Those who value you Those who know your value will appreciate you. Jesus loves you. The church values you. The church, Jesus cares. Do you notice what Jesus leads up to in Luke 11? How much more will God give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him persistently? Listen, and by the way, You're really not in a dysfunctional church. You're in a good church with just a lot of dysfunctional but not disqualified people because our desire, our, des our desire, 
you don't believe me, show up around here on a Monday or Tuesday. Any day, someone's doing something for God here. Whether it's putting numbers on a mailbox, trimming oleanders, getting ready for why? There's a desire here that if you'll implement this desire, I don't care what your dysfunction is. If you'll come up and find a place and touch the hem of his garment, your desire will defeat your dysfunction. I wonder I wonder today the power that could be created the attention that could be garnered if every one of us as a as a church as a group would begin to knock I wonder who would get their healing today. I wonder whose marriage would be restored. I wonder whose family. I wonder who would find that fire again for the things of God. Is there someone here willing to lead the way to come and knock like never before on the door of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and be persistent? 